ಶ್ರೀಲಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಕೀಲಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಕೀಲಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಕೀಲಪ್ರಭುಪಾದಕೀಲಪ್ರಭು
and animals just eat sleep mate and defend and that's what most people are doing those people who really want to do something extraordinary should rise early in the morning and become thinkers thinking people only do great things very nice that you all have gotten up today volume seems very less now is it hare krishna you can hear me well they can hear we check the recording volume is it good then you can put this one okay see here is a beautiful conversation by shil prabhupad on the operator of the universal machine there are a couple of conversations huh, of shil prabhupad so i am going to show you the conversation quickly and then i will show you a powerpoint based on this this will be very easy to understand okay so shil prabhupad is saying here the atheist says there is no god no operator of this big universal machine but has the atheist any experience of a machine working without an operator proper is asking huh? now some of you may say yes there are machines which work without any operator like in america there are cars which don't have any driver at all huh? so automated cars you know how can you say that every every car is operated only by a driver huh? so in uh, 10 years from now they are going to have uh, the artificial intelligence is growing so fast that you don't need a uh, uh drivers will be out of job now uh, it's going to be operated by robots only so uh now <clears throat> yes robots may be operating but behind the robot there is a man uh, you would see that like uh, if you have recently seen the female robo male robo and all they put a face cut actually there's no difference between male and female robo robots are robots only you put a woman's face and it's a female robo uh, you put a man's face it's a man's robot and make a machine speak with a female tone recorded tone and then that is female robot and but both of them are connected to the same wifi the wifi connects the intelligence of all the robots is one you know that from there only they draw that is one difference between you and me huh? and the robots huh? if you see you have your brain intelligence i have my brain intelligence but the robots are all connected to the common server from where they draw their this thing it is simply a dead machine but fools only will believe seeing the robots uh, having a female face or a male face to be a man or a woman and they are really making a fool out of you like the movement of the eyebrows or the smile of the uh, face cut these are all programmed or even the speech is programmed what is lacking in a robo a robo can never tell you what is the smell of a rose flower it cannot tell you what is the beauty of a picture it cannot tell you the sweet uh, sweetness of someone singing huh? it cannot tell you the taste of a gulab jamun hmm. it cannot tell you so none of these things can be you know ascertained by a robot because what is missing in that ha huh? consciousness is missing there is no consciousness at all of course if you tell a robot to tell you good morning it will tell you good morning or when you program a robot to say good night in the morning you get up it will say good night hmm? yeah because you have programmed it so to be so actually uh, the, the modern times they can actually make a fool out of you because many times students have no knowledge of bhagavad gita hmm? therefore they can become fools hmm? because if you know bhagavad gita you will know for example i have mobile with me i put alarm clock that i want to rise at 3 am hmm? i i uh, put it in the night 9 o'clock i am sleeping i want to get up at 3 so morning when i get up instead of 3 i got up at 2:50 only and i went to the bathroom to take a bath and while taking bath i saw the mobile was ringing tick 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 huh. so other devotees were sleeping in the room they were getting disturbed hmm? because 3 o'clock it is telling me get up get up get up correct no and then uh, all devotees got up hearing the sound where is sound coming from you know it's hiding somewhere at the mobile isn't it and then it stops and after 5 minutes again tick 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 get up get up so i came in half an hour 3 to 3:30 that means five times it was ringing get up get up get up that is that is how the machine is foolish huh? that much foolish machine is imagine if i told achyogopal prabhu sleeping in the same room how you get me up at 3 o'clock and i got up at 2:15 and went to bathroom so 3 o'clock he will wake up to get me up and not finding me what he will understand 
will keep on saying every five minutes, Prabhuji, Prabhuji, get up, get up, Prabhuji, Prabhuji, get up, get up. Will he say that? Will he say like that? that? That is the difference between a conscious man and a machine. You understand or not? Correct, no? So, <clears throat> therefore, there is no machine in this world which is operating without operator. Like there is a, what do you call it, the uh, drone which is flying. Only a foolish child will be thinking that the drone is flying on its own. You know that there is an operator behind it. Somewhere standing in the mid- middle of the crowd, he is sitting somewhere and operating it. So it is operating. Is it not true? Hmm. So, <clears throat> There are many machines which may apparently appear to be functioning on their own. In, when we were in mechanical engineering, they used to use the word capstan and turret lathes. Huh? So they advertise those lathes as automatic lathes. Anybody from mechanical engineering here? Anybody? Yeah, there are uh, three, four devotees. So <clears throat> how man uses words to cheat you, you can see that. Is it automatic lathe? I have personally used turret lathe. Hmm. I have done, I did my... Beta chem tech, you know, working in late, so we have done the activity. Why they call it automatic? You know, they have a turret in that. that it has got six phases or eight phases. So you can set up different tools in that. And that setting up the tools takes time. You know, it may take two, three days for you to set up to make a bolt or a nut. And once it is made, you can make 20,000 bolts, 20,000 nuts you can make. Cut, 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 it will be going. So they call it automatic. Is it really automatic? If you are setting it up, then how can you call it automatic? Hmm. Similarly, I give a command, one file I give, one command, I press the button. Immediately in another computer room, it will be, it can go for 10 days also, I'm printing. You may call it as automatic printer. It's not automatic printer. Who gave the command? A living person, Radesham Das, I gave the command. Hmm. Therefore, it is printing. Show me one machine in this world which is working without a command. Show me. One machine, any of you here, you are all educated boys, come up, give one example. One machine which has no living person's intervention, which is functioning on its own. Show me one. Anywhere. Think about it. Hmm. <coughs> yeah? Not now. Not now. Before it was there? No. Ah. Maybe in future. No, no, how? Therefore, you have to say that. How? How such a thing can exist? A machine without an operator. There has to be a living person interfering in that. Therefore, the very first thing in spirituality is Jada and Chetan. The difference between the two. If you say it can exist in future, that means you just don't know what Jada is, what Chetan is. You don't know the difference between the two. You understand what I am saying? Jada means this is computer is Jada. This wall is Jada. You are not Jada. Are you Jada? Who are you? Chetan. You are conscious that you are sitting here. Correct, no? Is there any of you not aware you are sitting here? You are aware, no? Probably if you are sleeping, you will not know you are here. (laughs) If you are awake, you will know you are here. Correct, no? That consciousness, cogito ergo sum, Descartes said that. Cogito ergo sum means I am aware that I am existing. That's the first thing. Okay, after you are aware that you are existing, there are three internal symptoms you will find in yourself. Three internal, all of you ask yourself whether you are feeling these three symptoms or not. First symptom is that you don't want to die, you want to exist as long as possible. Hmm? For example, if a thief comes and shows you a knife, will you tell him that, okay, kill me, stab me, will you say? Or will you say, don't kill me? You want my wallet, here is my wallet, please don't kill me. Correct, no? Is there anybody here who will allow someone to shoot you or kill you? Are you ready? No. You want to live or not? Correct, you want to live. All of us want to live. You will see that. Internally, you have the same feeling. You go to America, you go to Australia, go to Canada, you go to Europe, you come to India, anywhere. Everybody wants to live and live how long? Live how long, tell me? Huh? Live forever. You don't want to die at all. You will see that. Second, you will find everybody has only one common goal. Internally, you can experience it. You are looking for happiness. You are not looking for suffering. Is there anybody here you thought that probably the last five years not even a viral fever or a headache I got? You know, I go to temple and pray to God. At least one viral fever, three days. You know, will anybody pray like that? Nobody wants suffering. Everybody wants, everybody wants only happiness. One boy was telling, probably happiness will get boring, you know. 
I want a little bit mixture of suffering and boring. Then I asked him, say, first year you got, say, 7 grade out of 10. Second year you got 8 out of 10. Third year you got 9 out of 10. In fourth year, what you will want? 10 out of 10. Correct, no? Will you say that I am getting bored with increasing grades? In fourth year, let me fail. Will you say like that? Is there any one of you here? Tell me. One boy in IIT, Kadakpur, he got 10 out of 10 in the first year. Second year also he got 10 out of 10. So he got 10 out of 10 throughout the course. Hmm? The entire course he was 10 out of 10. Any one of you honestly touch your heart and tell me, if you got 10 out of 10 grade in all the four years, will you get bored? Hmm? Any one of you here? Any one boy you tell me that, I suppose I'll get bored, I want at least 8 out of 10, at least once. Tell me. That means you are looking only for happiness. You are not looking for suffering. Say Indian gas shop owner, for example, first year he got 5 lakhs, second year he got 10 lakhs, third year he got 20 lakhs. He will never say that why God is giving me profit, profit, I am getting bored with profit, let there be a fire accident in my shop. You know? You know? <laughs> let me get so thought nuksan bhi hona chahiye. Will he ever think like that? You know, if he thinks maybe he is mentally retarded or something. You know, any sane person will never want suffering. He will want only happiness. Like there was a, there is a moron joke, you know. This moron was hitting his head against a wall. Somebody asked him, why are you hitting? He said, when I am not hitting, I am feeling happy. He said. Is there anyone of you who have to hit the head against the wall to feel happy? So you don't want suffering. You want only happiness. So this is internally. See, whatever I am telling you, don't believe in me. You test yourself. You can check it yourself. If you are not feeling, then you can challenge me. Clear? These are all things you don't need Bhagavad Gita for that. You can yourself experience that. I am not bringing any scripture till now. I am only talking to you. First thing what I told you, none of you want to die. Correct? Second thing I told you, none of, every one of you, you are looking for? Happiness. Okay. Third, th third thing I will tell you, you can see that every one of you is knowledge seeking. You want to increase your awareness. You want to increase your awareness. And you also want to increase uh, as much as you can, your knowledge. You like to be a very knowledgeable person or you like to be a fool? Honestly, tell me. Knowledge. Right. Otherwise, why do you go to school, then college, huh? then you, you know, further study, you do doctorate, you do post-doctorate. Because you want to increase your knowledge. Increase your awareness. Is it not true? Even a plant kept in a dark room, open the window, it goes towards the sunlight. What do you call that? It goes from darkness to light, which means it goes from ignorance to knowledge. You will see that. That tendency is there in every living being. Every living being strives for perfection materially, spiritually, both respects. You know there is a department called quality control in all the companies. What is the quality control department for? What is it for? Yeah? Quality checking, that is true. But what is the purpose of quality checking? What is the purpose of checking for defects? Huh? Okay, so it should be faultless. Correct, no? Good products, yeah. So do they want to increase the PPM or reduce the PPM? Say 500 PPM defects. Correct, no? 500 parts per million. Is defective. So a good company will try to make the PPM more or less? Less. That means lesser the defect, better is the company. Correct? No? In the, like for example, there are machines which may produce 4000 PPM. Huh? Then some companies are able to produce 2000 PPM. Some companies are able to produce 500 parts per million. Huh? That means it's a very high quality product. Correct? No? They are able to produce large. That means everybody is striving for perfection. You agree? Like you are doing experiment. Why do you look for consecutive readings? In order to ensure that your, uh, what do you call it? Your research is perfect. Correct, no? So, you will see that the striving for perfection also involves increasing awareness. Increasing knowledge. Increasing awareness. You will see that. Now, an amazing phenomenon you will see the first point I told you about the death point. Huh? None of us want to die. Not only you don't want to die, you don't want the near and dear ones also not to die. You want them not to die also. Like your mother, your father, your brother, sister. Hmm. You want to protect yourself and you want to protect 
them also hmm. and you want to make sure and you will actually do go to any extent to protect them correct now uh, you will make a uh, lot of hard work you observed this in all living beings that means self protection and also protection of those who are very dear to you also hmm. and you want them also to live as much as they can correct now live longer and longer and longer like my father passed away 3 years ago 3 4 years ago he was 84 and mother was 80 you know they both passed away first mother passed away first and 3 months later father passed so they had come to pune uh, to live and live out their last part of their life so very nicely they spent that time you know completely in krishna consciousness so of course my sisters were very i mean broken down they were crying so um i was telling uh, one of the one of my one of my sisters that see our father he has lived out a good life complete life you know he was a very perfect gentleman and uh, very respectable in society and he was a professor of english in a government arts college for 35 years he worked and he was very moral he was very spiritual and uh, highly respected and uh, even big big collectors and is officers come and bow down to him huh? because he was a very nice gentleman and also intelligently they came to pune and they spent the time in the last part of the time and then they came to temple regularly taking darshan met many swamis maharajas and took association everything now i said he has led a complete life now <clears throat> he left his body uh, hearing the kirtans i was personally present also <clears throat> so yes you may be a little bit uh, uh, pained but in case you want him to live how long you want him to live i asked her mm-hmm. even more at least i asked 90 she is even more 95 100 or even if they live for 500 years still still you say let them live for 1000 years correct na no? you will if you very carefully think we all want to parents to live forever mm-hmm. and we also want to live for ever correct na no? so but in this body we cannot live you know that the body eventually gets worn out but we have a desire huh? body is a machine it gets worn out over a period of time hmm. just like any machine has a what do you call it in english uh, depreciation is it yeah, depreciation correct Depre- huh? yeah depreciation means i think it's worn out worn out worn out and then you it becomes scrap value huh? you throw it and then you get a new machine correct no yeah so it has no more uh, than scrap value after some time it just gets depreciated isn't it huh so similarly body is also a machine hmm? like you find when you get older and older suddenly doctor says your kidney is not functioning huh? or sometimes he says your lungs have a problem or he says uh, you know your liver has a problem hmm? or he says you got a cancer or something hmm? or you got a brain tumor or something or some people have multiple organ failure everything is going wrong huh? you heard that multiple organ failure eight eight parts of the body are not functioning so then at that time the body is no more fit for the soul to live then the body is uh, it's a machine it's about wearing out but we have a strong desire to urge to live you can see that similarly happiness not only you want to be happy you want to make those around you also happy and you want them to give you happiness also huh? you seen that huh? you give me happiness i'll give you happiness and you live forever i will live forever Uh, you can see that huh? and also we want to increase our awareness huh? we want to increase our knowledge about the world we are living in uh, you can see that see why did science progress first of all science wanted to know that what is the world in which we are living in are there any dangers for us huh? if there are any dangers through science we advance and we defend ourselves to protect ourselves that's one goal of science hmm? another goal of science is to make life more comfortable hmm? like for example walking is painful for me but if i have a bike it's more comfortable if i have a car even more comfortable if i have a plane even more comfortable increase the comforts like philips company has a statement what do you call that let's make things comfortable hmm? of course our vedas are saying let us make people better uh, philips company says let us make things better which is better should we make things better or people better is it not true like in those days when i would go to hospital to check my weight you know the weighing machine will be a huge machine this much like big suitcase this much thick huh? big you can't even move it also we used to stand on the top of that over the years you know people made better and smaller uh, weighing machines 
now it is such a sleek machine like a laptop computer like we have the macbook like that you have the weighing machine which you can carry in your bag also and many guys in corporate circles you know were having obesity they carry here also with them they carry a weighing machine also time time they put and see is my weight reducing or going up <laughs> <laughs> now the machine has become better but the person is his obesity is in- reducing or increasing <laughs> so they are not making people better they are making machines better is it not true but we actually have a very strong desire to strive for perfection surely we all strive for perfection in whether in, in your studies or in your uh, lifestyle life also like for example your relationship with mother father brother sister or wife children we definitely would want it to be better you want it to be better at bitter ha huh? better you agree is there anybody or no little bitter also is good ha huh? no you want better surely so these three things are internally observable symptoms of a living body it's called a sat chit ananda ananda is what happiness chit is knowledge sat is living eternally correct na sat chit ananda okay now you all tell me any of you did not observe these three things within you you can tell me you didn't observe it yeah like there are people who are depressed and they want to ah okay now somebody doesn't want to live you want to commit suicide now you all tell me the reason why he want to commit suicide so that he can be peaceful uh, who is he can be peaceful because ah his idea is what if i die then my problems will be finished and i'll be happy forever and that matches with the other one ananda one correct no actually he doesn't become happy he becomes a ghost when a person dies <laughs> because the atma without the body means it's like you know you 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 have desires in your mind but there is no g- gross body to execute servo motors are not there no? so you have only program in the microprocessor but there is no servo motor so how can you f- execute so the one is roaming like a ghost and then he has to get another body later he will get but the because they don't know about it they are innocent or ignorant we can say due to that they commit uh, suicide thinking that i'll be happy correct now that's the idea so that again matches the third one you will see that therefore the three you will always see that correct now like somebody does, says sir you are saying we want to increase awareness you know but i don't want to go to college i just want to sleep in my house always you tamo guni fellow there are lazy boys or not in your college there are no lazy boys there are boys correct now father comes and shouts say i am sending you money you are not studying correct now so he doesn't want to increase awareness because he thinks sleeping is happiness correct no he thinks like that and then again that matches the third one correct no ah ignorance is bliss yeah <laughs> that's the idea so that is sat chit ananda three things anybody else okay now externally there are three symptoms of the soul's presence which you can observe in yourself and in others the first one is called perception hmm? perception means like you know big himalayan mountain is standing but himalayas cannot observe the ocean and vast ocean is lying on the ground level it cannot observe the himalayas because both are dead both are dead a dead thing cannot observe another dead thing only a living person can observe which is called perception we call it you can perceive for example you can see someone is beautiful is there anyone here if someone is beautiful you cannot see them as beautiful correct no you can see somebody beautiful huh? similarly you hear a sweet music you merit if you have a, you can see you hear the sweet music immediately you recognize it like put gulab jamun in the mouth you can recognize it is sweet oh i like it correct no is there anybody you put gulab jamun in the mouth and it feels like bitter gourd huh? no it's tasty all of us agree that gulab jamun is wonderful you can see that so you will see that this is called perception ability to perceive through the five senses shabda sparsha rasa roop gandha huh? five things ears <clears throat> eyes nose tongue and skin <clears throat> like you go to the bathroom to take a bath in the winter season now december and january are going to be very cold chill water huh? you take and put it on the head you everybody if it doesn't feel, correct not you don't feel nice it's perception isn't it then you mix with hot water and you take in so it's perception this is the first symptom of a living body huh? that you can experience perception second thing is 
mental activity. As soon as you perceive something, you have mental activity. Say you are walking on the road, you see a snake. What is the perception? Immediately, you see the snake movement. You see, if, uh, if something looks like a snake is not moving, you will want to know whether it is a snake or a rope. Correct, no? But if it is moving, definitely it is not a rope. Rope doesn't move on its own. Correct, no? So if it is moving, moving rope means what it is? Snake, you understand, it's a snake. It's moving from the right side to left side, it's going. So as soon as you see it, then mental activity starts immediately. What is the mental activity? Huh? Ah, no, of course, that is a later thing. But in mind what is going on when you see a snake? Huh? You become alert. Yeah? And that, that is action. But in the mind, fear. But why fear comes? Huh? Uh, what is the knowledge? Yeah. Because you have heard that snakes bite and it can be fatal. We may die. And it's poisonous. So that's your mind is thinking, oh, my Lord, this is a very dangerous creature. Huh? It's very poisonous. It's very frightening to you. And then thirdly, purposeful action. What is the action you will take? Purposeful action? Run away. Or you may take a stick and kill it. The purposeful action. So these three you will find in a living body Wherever there is life, you will find. Say, for example, you go to somebody's house. You know, they come and keep a vati with, you know, some five, six gulab jamans, big, big gulab jamans floating in a golden liquid. Huh? Along with a the spoon, they keep it in front of you. So, as soon as you look at it, what is the perception? Huh? What is the perception? Mouth wandering. Ah, mouth wandering. You will see that. You will see that, oh, gulab jamans are very nice. I, I like it very much. It's a soft and beautiful gulab jamun, I, would, I, I feel like eating. <clears throat> then that's a mental activity. Perception means you're seeing it is existing. Huh? It's called a satta. Your existence and others' existence you can understand. Like all of you sitting in this room now, you are sitting now. Are you also aware that some more boys are sitting here? Or is somebody not aware? You are aware. Correct. Now that's called as perception. Hmm? And then per, uh, mental activity means thought process. Thought is going on. Oh, gulab jamuns are very nice. It's very sweet. I like it. I wish they tell me to take it. Hmm? Like that. And as soon as they watch you not eating, half an hour, they ask you, why don't you take it? Uh, Please take it, they say. Immediately you take it. And then you put it in the mouth. <laughs> and what is that one? Uh, purposeful action. Per- uh, perception, mental activity, purposeful action. How many of you can observe these three things in you? Yeah. You can observe in yourself and others also many times, correct, no? For example, you are bowing down and taking a stone in the hand. And what will the dog do? Run away. Why he does it? Because as soon as you pick up the stone, you know, the dog is watching you. It is able to perceive you, correct, no? It is able to see you. And what is his mental activity? No, no, running is not activity. Mental, mental, huh? Ah, he has picked up the stone now. What is the next thing this fellow will do? He will throw at me. He has understood it. So what is purposeful action? <laughs> now they have made robots like a dog. You have seen that? No? In the YouTube you must have seen. Huh? You know? And that goes in, the, in front of the real dog and you know, runs like this. And the real dog is wondering, what is this one? Correct? Right <laughs> they put like this. So now we may also see, hey, they have made a robot which moves like a dog. But can, that, does that dog have these three things? Hmm? Perception, mental activity, purposeful action. Think about it. Does it have consciousness, conscious awareness? Is he feeling, I want to live forever? Huh? Yeah, does he think, I don't want to die? Huh? Does he ever think, I want to increase my knowledge? That awareness is not there. Even in Google, you go and say, you know, uh, what is the difference between a robo and a human being? When you say, clearly they say, the robo has no awareness. They say that, I have seen it myself. And you can see that. Even they realize it. They recognize it. Recently, in Boston, they are making robots uh, exactly like a soldier. For example, you know, this movements, you know, this movements, and this movements, and this movement also. They are all movements, no? Correct, no? Similarly, hip movements, I mean, the leg movements, everything, you know, bending of the legs and everything, all that they are making. So, uh, sensors are put so that the robot can sense the floor, this type of floor or this type of floor. It can jump from one one step to another and all that and you operate it from your control room. Correct, no? 
You can do like that. There are robots made like that there. Now they say that the advantage of these robots is what? It can walk through the jungle which is infested with a lot of plants, trees and everything, animals and everything. No? You can send it through that. Human beings cannot go. They may be uh, you know, bitten by the animals or something like that. Hmm? And it can walk through fire also. So, come, so they are trying to make foot soldiers now so that the foot soldiers can be replaced by robots. And another advantage they say the human losses can be saved. Huh? So these are advantages. What is the biggest disadvantage they found out? Uh, your robo can be hacked by your enemy. And the same robo which you are sending like this will take about and come towards you. I will shoot you. <laughs> then they decide very dangerous thing now. Huh? Because the robo doesn't know you know, you belong to which party? <laughs> <laughs> Correct. No? It's, a de- it's a dead machine. Huh? Whoever has the program in hand, whoever has the control in hand, it will obey that. It's a machine. Just like when we were small children, we had a car. You know, my parents used to bring a car with a key. Chirp, 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 leave it. And it used to go like that. And we would run behind the car, wondering you know, how the car is moving on its own. Correct, no? And little do we know that it's uh, they have given a spring loaded thing, it's moving like that. Similarly, robot doesn't know whether you know India is sending it or Pakistan is sending it. They, it doesn't know. Whether Ukraine is saying, I mean, Russia is sending or America is sending, it doesn't know. It is. It has no awareness. As soon as you program it, it will go. It will just, just like you have seen this uh, drum toy, if you give a key, tong, 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 on the key is over, it will stop like that, that's all. <laughs> that is the machine, you can see that. Whereas human, I mean, where there is a living body, the living persons have uh, awareness. So, 3 plus 3, how many symptoms? So go and challenge any of your friends in the college. Let anybody come in the friend. This is the way Srila Prabhupada presented the truth. This is why ISKCON is spreading all over the world. Do you understand now? Uh, how in America in 1965, Prabhupada could win the heart of the Americans? Because he was not bluffing. We are not just some religious people. Some uh, puja party we are doing, kukum, putting kung, kumkum chandan and just dancing. Huh? Behind our dancing, there is a very logical philosophy. You can see that. Huh? Our ego may be hurt when somebody says the truth. Huh? Like in the morning, you switch on the light. Huh? Immediately, if you sleeping person, you say, hey, put out the light. You want to sleep long, longer. But you may say, Prabhuji, it's four o'clock now. Huh? Nah, let us get up. Let us get ready for the Mangalarati. Correct, no? Like, even before the exams also, our mind says, you sleep now, I am very tired. But then you get up, correct? No? Because you, it's a call for the duty. You have to go for the exam, otherwise you will miss the paper. So, in the same manner, you use your intelligence and brain. Don't bring your emotion. Huh? Use your brain and see for yourself. Because when you go to college, is your professor talking emotionally to you? They are presenting their logic and we are presenting our logic. Prabhupada defeated the atheistic scientist with his logic. Like this he presented. So, what is he is saying? No, but you cannot compare the whole universe to any man-made machine like that. Actually, what is taking the role of atheist in this? Hmm? And Papa is saying, why? Just the other day, we saw a huge printing press in Japan. It was printing the sheets, collecting them, stacking them. So many things were being done systematically all by machine. Similarly, by the universal machine, the seasonal changes are going on. Sun is rising, moon is rising, water of the oceans is moving in waves. Everything is being done systematically. The sun and the moon are rising exactly on time. The seasons are coming exactly on time. This is not how a machine works, either he is asking. You understand, no? Like in this world uh, where you are living now, look at the world around you. Is it a lively, active world or is it a dead world? Uh, So when Prabhupada was in London, he saw two houses. Prabhupada showed, the right side house he showed, you know, there was no light. It was very sandy, the friend. And the ails, you know, they were filled with leaves, fallen fallen from the trees. You know, the glass of the window was broken. And uh, on the left side, Prabhupada showed another house where the light was on. And the ails were neatly swept, kept very clean, neat and clean. The house appeared very neat and tidy. So Prabhupada asked, what is the difference between this house and this house? And immediately the words could say that Prabhupada, this house is inhabited by somebody. And this house seems to be uninhabited. And then he asked a question. What do you think about the universe in which you are living in? 
Is it like inhabited or uninhabited? How does it look like? Then all the devotees saw the universe and said, you know, as soon as you get up in the morning, you see the sun shines, you know, the cloud showers, the crops grow, the flowers blossom, isn't it? the seasons changes, the grains are coming out of the earth. It's a very lively world we are living in. And then Prabhupada asked, are you doing any of these things? Are you the controller of the sun? Are you the controller of the moon? Are you the controller of the rain shower? Are you growing the grains and crops? Is any scientist giving you your daily food? Can they create any food? Can, they can't create one grain. You know, million years have passed. They can't create one grain and give you. They can't create one drop of blood. You don't think they have not tried. Go to Google and search. I have already done research on this. You know, they try to create blood and what are the problems you can see that. You will see that. Therefore, they come to you for blood donation camp. You will see that. So, you will see that all these things, though I am not telling you a story that long before God created, you have to believe in me. Right here and now you are eating food daily. Is there anybody that doesn't eating? Is not you are not eating food here, tell me. Every day you are eating. Who is giving you the food? Is a scientist creating and giving you food? They can give you nuts and bolts. Huh? Or they can give you electronic chips, which you can't eat. Only potato chips you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So, you can see for yourself. Huh? All The universe is functional. It is not a dead universe. It is a functioning universe. Day in and day out, right in the morning you can see. Have you ever seen the sun getting up at 10 o'clock, rubbing the eyes and saying, today I am a little late, I am sorry. Huh? Have you seen that? Every single day, you may be late, but the sun is never late. Correct, no? Madhubhaya atvati vato yam suryas tapati madhubhaya varishati indro dahat yagnir mnutvishcharati madhubhaya In the Bhagavatam, it is said the sun, due to the order of the Lord, is rising on time and setting on time. The fire has the burning sensation and death takes its toll. The Lord of showers, Indra, he brings rains on time. All these things are happening in the universe, Bhagavatam says. Because there is one Ishwar in the top. There is one controller of the universe who is called as the operator of the cosmic machine. Just like I am the operator of this laptop, you are the operator of your bike. Similarly, there is an operator of the cosmic machine. Without whose presence, this universe will be a dead jada. It will not be Chaitan. Now, all of your Atmas in your own respective bodies and the presence of the Atma can be understood in 3 plus 3 ways I told you. Huh? external and internal symptoms. Similarly, in this universe also is a big machine <clears throat> and no machine can operate on its own. Even the so-called automatic machines, like uh, recently uh, when I was in US, I was talking uh, about robots. So, uh, uh, one boy who is, on, who is in robotics, who is himself in robotics, animatronics, and also he is, uh, he is from a computer science student. Huh? So he was talking to me, he, he, one point he deeply appreciated uh, when I made in the class. Later on after the class he came and met me, he said, this I never thought, he said. This is a marvelous point, I am going to tell my professor, huh? he was telling. <clears throat> so this boy from Massachusetts, he was telling this point that, I was making a point that every machine uh, works for a living person and it is made by a living person. I told a robo, for example. A robo is made, designed and put on, put in this world by some scientist. And the robo also is working for the pleasure of some, some leader. Correct or not? Huh? So this is the difference between a dead thing and a living thing. You will see a, a living person actually makes the machines. And the machines are working for him. Like washing machine, you make it. After that, you put your clothes and it washes for you. Correct, no? And the washing machine is dead. That's like harmonium now. You made the harmonium. Harmonium, you don't glorify harmonium. Like if there is a very nice kirtan done, you know, you will never say, what a beautiful harmonium today. Huh? Will you say that? What will you say? And what a wonderful uh, harmonium player we had today. He played harmonium very well. Correct, no? Similarly, somebody is a very good mridanga player. Huh? Prithvi Prabhu, or, um, Pavan Gaurang Prabhu. Huh? He plays good mridanga. So will you appreciate the mridanga or him? No? Correct, no? You, you are not going to... He, he is, he's the one beating the Maridanga. Maridanga made the sound, but he gets the credit. You understand, no? Correct, no? So, <clears throat> similarly, for example, somebody is cooking in the kitchen. Very nice feast they made. Huh? So, you... What is the first thing you will ask? Ah, who cooked it? So, you don't appreciate the dead things. 
you appreciate the living person behind the dead things you understand the point everywhere you will see that yeah so anything you take for example you know when our plane landed once you know the pilot you know it was such a smooth landing people clapped hands people appreciated because sometimes some fellows actually land the plane such with a boom boom it jerks like anything sometimes so this fellow smooth land like garuda land like that he landed very beautifully everybody clapped hands so what are they appreciating are they appreciating the plane or the pilot ah how you may say are a plane only landed huh? yes plane landed but who landed it so nicely the pilot similarly this world when you see should you appreciate the uh, things in this world or should you appreciate the person behind this world now now you got your card card now you see huh? you understood now but what are the scientists appreciating uh, here is where you come to the point they are caught up in the jada but we are appreciating the chetan now you ask yourself who is intelligent huh? because in this world you don't appreciate the jada things you appreciate the chetan person behind the jada therefore you should know the difference between jada and chetan right in the beginning hmm. jada chetan ishwar beyond both so and and in this way all these things purpose is these things are happening in which is also like a great machine your body is a great machine hmm. like if you see your own body also you know you see this is a bit so you'll find there are multiple functions going on in the body you will see this bodily machine and the amazing thing is all these functions will happen only when the atma is present in the body as soon as atma leaves the body the body is called dead and then it is then they take the body even your own relatives will take the body where to graveyard for burying or burning huh because this lub dub lub dub the heart doesn't function as soon as atma leaves the body it cannot function after that you will see that so similarly this universe also it is said ishariktam uh, as soon as god takes off from this universe if god doesn't pay attention to this universe everything will become dead which means you won't get uh, rain shower you won't get crops you won't get grains you won't get vegetables fruits you won't get air every, every if if he rejects this world then the world cannot function just like your body cannot function when the soul leaves the body and goes away it's like that ha huh? so that's what prabhu is saying here. now devotee taking the role of an atheist is saying but his universal vision is so wonderful that it goes on without an operator he is saying and prabhu is saying you are a rascal dull you cannot understand how someone is operating this universal machine you cannot find in your experience any machine that is working without a person why do you bring this idea that without an operator this big universal machine is working that's a false idea and then devotee is saying there are some automatic machines proposing no behind every machine there is an operator devotee someone must turn it on and off proposes is yes there is no such thing as an automatic machine that is impersonalism we see and the devotee is saying we see the operator of these small machines shri prabhupad but we can't see the operator of this universal machine and proposes saying have you seen the operator of the electric power house do you think the power house is working automatically devotee is saying well we could see him if he wanted to 
we could drive there right now hmm. and prabhu is saying yes and you can go to krishna and see him also but first you must become qualified you are saying that is not so easy prabhu is saying it is very easy as krishna says in bhagavad gita bhavo gyana tapasa bhuta mad bhava magataha by becoming purified through knowledge and penance many have come to see me in the past so why are you disappointed you can go to see krishna श्रीयो वैशास्तथा शूद्रा तेपियांति पराम गति इफ यू आर लो बॉन्ड आर लेस इंटेलिजेंट यू कैन स्टिल गो टू हेम कृष्णा इज ओपन टू एवरी वन सिंपली बिकम क्वालिफाइड दैट्स ऑल एंड व्हाट इज दट क्वालिफिकेशन कृष्णा सेज मनमना भवमद्भक्त मध्याजी माम नमस्कुर जस्ट ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ मी बिकम मई डिवोटी वर्शिप मी एंड ऑफर यूर रेस्पेक्ट्स टू मी दीज फोर थिंग्स यू मस्ट डू वी हैव ओपन अवर टेम्पल्स फॉर दिस पर्पज सो यू कैन ऑलवेज थिंक ऑफ कृष्णा वर्शिप हेम offer obeisances to him namaskar to him and also become his devotee then mame vaishya se asamshay hai without any doubt you will go to him what is the difficulty the devotee is saying the operator of the power house is running the power house but it is not uh, it's not really necessary that we go to see him we can simply enjoy the electricity provided by the power house which means what he is saying why to bother about god you know god has given facilities in the world we just enjoy the facilities and go on with life proposing that's what you do if you are a rascal or fool he says but if you are intelligent enough you will ask what is the operator let me see him that is the difference between an intelligent person and one who is dull and proper talking about a boy you know who saw the dum 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 sound then he was curious to know where is the sound coming from he asked the father so if one is very dull just like cats and dogs they will not inquire about the operator behind this universal machine in the you know in the human form of life this jignasa or inquiry should come otherwise you remain like cats and dogs and then he is asking what about the body shil prabhupad isn't it also a machine prabhu says yes but the scientists say that the body is more complicated than any machine because it can body can think feel will whereas machines cannot do that and prabhu saying the scientists cannot see the thinking feeling willing is coming from the operator of the machine the soul and these people cannot understand so he is saying they cannot smita they then is talking about the soul now i am getting little late i have a program to be attend in the temple So I'll quickly show you the PowerPoint uh, in a minute, and then I will I will conclude in five minutes. I'm going to conclude because we have a, one Maharaj has come to temple. His Holiness uh, uh, Guru Guru Gopal Swami Maharaj. So uh, we are going to attend this program. So in five minutes I'll finish. Okay, okay. This is a summary of uh, operator of the cosmic machine. Prabhu is speaking. Huh? You see, there are five types of people. Prabhu is saying, "What the atheist says, we created the bulb, but nobody created sun. We created swimming pool, but nobody created ocean. That is their logic. Is it logical? You see, when you make a small creation, you make a big fuss about it. You advertise so much. You, we made it. We made it. We made it. But God has made so many wonderful things. Any, therefore, in our discover yourself, one full session we devote for." understanding god behind the creation correct no so that's a atheistic fellow and and the second fellow rascal proper calls who is the rascal he says the operator of the power house is running the power house but it's not really necessary to that we go and see we simply enjoy the electricity <coughs> sometimes in villages what people do they put a hook on the, the the electric line and they draw the electricity you know that and do they pay the this thing charges sometimes the eb people come and catch they have to pay a heavy fine correct no <coughs> similarly you find you know modern day scientists they take help of uh uh the what do you call it the waves for example electromagnetic waves you know? there are am waves fm waves alpha rays gamma rays beta rays you see that now how is the satellite functioning satellite is functioning because like i am talking to you on phone you are in america i am in india for example how you know the satellite communication uh, is this communication possible without those waves it's not possible where those waves created by man or by god god man is what is man doing is taking support of that exactly like the village are putting the hook and taking support of the electricity supplied by the eb you understand no if eb doesn't supply electricity will he get electricity 
In the same manner, if God did not create these waves like you know, alpha rays, beta rays, gamma rays, uh, AM waves, FM waves, these things are created by God. Ultimately, you will see that. Man is taking support of them. For example, Guru This uh, uh, because of which you are sitting on the ground now. Did you create it or God created it? Yeah, already he made it in the beginning of the creation itself, correct? No? So, here Prabhupada says, man is taking support of God's creation, he is eating nice food, he is drinking water, he is breathing air, but he says that why to bother about God? Just take things. It's like, you know, you are all students studying in your college. Say you take money from your father every month. Approximately your parents send how much money? About 10, 20,000 they send you monthly. They send you money or they don't send you? They send you, correct? No? Imagine a boy is taking money and he's smoking, drinking and not studying. Saying that, Papa, just send money and keep quiet. Don't ask what I am doing. Is it a good student? Are you accountable to your father or not? Well, your father wants you to study and earn a degree and join his business, correct? No? On the other hand, imagine if somebody says, why to bother about father? As long as money is coming, I'll just enjoy. Eat, drink and be merry. That is uh, the rascal proper saying. Third one is lazy fellow. <coughs> See this fellow. <laughs> See the picture. Huh? <coughs> <coughs> this fellow, he has no inquisitiveness. He is very lazy. Lazy to inquire about what is this world, why is it existing, what is life, what is the goal of life. He doesn't ask anything. They live like cats and dogs. They have no inquisitiveness. And the fourth category of people is inquisitive person. Hmm? So, proposing 99.9% of the people are not at all inquisitive, he says. They are searching after happiness, but they are not inquisitive about ultimate source of happiness. So, they are baffled. Like this fellow is suffering from obesity, still he is eating, lying and eating. Uh, he wants happiness. But he doesn't know how to get the right type of happiness. He doesn't know. Lazy fellow. And inquisitive people actually inquire. But they are, even scientists are inquisitive. They, they want to know what is this world, how to tackle the problems in the world. But because many a times, they are trying on the realm of uh, pratyaksha, which means with their own senses. Huh? They don't, they have, they have, of course, in America when I was traveling, I met one Mr. Kunal. Uh, he is researching on um, body, mind, body and mind. So he's got 20 scientists now. They are going to come up with a research thesis on body and mind. And Hare Krishna Mahamantra is a scientifically proven mantra in the West nowadays. I have also myself many materials with me. So it will be introduced in all the American universities. Huh? Like Just like yoga has become very famous. Huh? Now some of the colleges and companies have made yoga compulsory in many places. They have a hall and they have they have training for their people. They want them to be healthy now. Same thing, Mahamantra will come to colleges very soon. Hmm? Because a lot of researchers have shown positive results. So, but why I am telling you, the inquisitiveness of the scientists eventually can go beyond the gross body, what we see, to the mind and to the soul also eventually. Hmm? But it will take a long time. An intelligent person, Prabhupada says, he studies authorized scriptures and finds answers to all his questions and becomes enlightened by following the scriptures. Hmm. So, this is the fifth. What is the first category I told you? Atheist? Then? Rascal? Third one? Re lazy? Huh? Inquisitive? Intelligent. Yeah. Yes. So, through knowledge and austerity, many souls in the past have attained God. Hmm. So, qualify yourself. Hmm. How do we attain that? Manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya jemam namaskuru Mami Vaishyasi Satyam Te Pratijane Priyo Sime Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is telling Arjuna, take a little effort, like you all have taken the effort to come here today. Hmm? Only when you go for a spiritual sermon, then you get a chance to hear some knowledge. When you hear some knowledge, you can think. Uh, when you think, then you can ask questions. When you ask questions, then more clarity comes. Hmm? And then you can, uh, that knowledge doesn't remain theory anymore for you. It becomes realized knowledge. Huh? It turns into wisdom. For you and then your eyes are opened then you can walk in the surface of the globe with full clarity full knowledge full confidence and you clearly understand that life has a goal what is the goal of life to awaken love hmm? love for god and love for all hmm? love is the last word in transcendence Prabhupada says hmm? so that love for god and love for all will be initially you love your mother and father then you love your caste people then your state people then country people then all humans you love uh, although you may love all humans still people eat cow or they eat a goat or a chicken. Huh? But when you when your love expands more and more, comes to the point of loving God, Krishna, then you love all living beings. You can't even harm an ant also at that time. That is the goal of life. Once such a love is 
सर्वे जना सुखिवंत सर्वे सू निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य माँ कचि दुख भाव इट्स वेरी फेमस वर्स इन सनातन धर्म सर्वे जना सुखि यु बिकम हैपी एंड मेक अदर्स हैपी दट्स द मेन गोल ऑफ धर्म एक्चुअली बट नाट हैपी इन अ वेरी लिमिटेड सेंस लाइक फ्रॉग इन द वेल अवर हैपीनेस हेज टू बी लाइक अट्लांटिक and that vast happiness is only attained by spiritual wisdom as lord krishna teaches arjuna in gita so some of you are living here some of you have come from outside my humble request to you keep in touch with devotees achyut gopal prabhu you know started from the scratch he had nobody when he came here he just had one boy or two boys but he is very very caring like a motherly care giving uh, devotee he is huh? and he developed it very beautifully hmm? and over a period of time they were in a small flat and they came for a bigger one one amazing thing with this place is it's a very serene setting your study also can go on peacefully without much noise around correct no it's a little inside it is it's a very beautiful big flat here yes actually a lot of hard work has gone in uh, by him and other senior devotees here huh ah uh, ankit no ankit and kartik kartik ankit and kartik have done a lot of good work huh Ah, Kamal Nath Prabhu. So these devotees are mentoring. They are they are actually mentoring and guiding many of the students, and also offering this wonderful facility for us to have such programs like this. This is L shaped. Both the halls are full today. Huh? Uh, devotees have come from other centers also here. Actually, this is a good uh, a facility where more students could be occupied. Otherwise, some of the voices are very small rooms. It's very nice. It is. So thank you all for your rapt attention. and enthusiastic participation so if you have any questions i will show you my email you can write to me i generally don't give email to everybody only for special devotees i am going to give now because you all heard me so patiently it's my duty to also clarify if you had any doubt yeah You can note down if you wish. If you had any questions, you can write to me. That first one, Radhisham. dot R N S. Series Khan Pune. dot com. If you found anything contrary to what I spoke, you are free to send me. And in uh, in our YouTube, uh, you will also find uh, behavioral science for youth. There is a section. Uh, there you will find many interesting seminars like this, and also. there is one more called self development course if any of you is concerned about uh, how to uh, become a better performer in anything so it's called self development course how to give up inferiority complex such kinds of things are also there so that is one very good course for students self development course another one is dys what is dys discover yourself that is also there if you go to the playlist you will find all that D- discover yourself and self development course and behavioral science for youth those are very good for all of you hmm? thank you shilpa pad ki jai par bhakta binda ki jai thank you